Hello guys, welcome to Tech Mode. And so my name is Pramod. Today, what we are going to do is that we will be building a RESTful API app in a Flask, and we will try to deploy it in Heroku. So uh, let's get started with it. So what we are doing is that we, our main motive is today is that to consume a particular API. Uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Uh, it's a kind of a, a service that's basically uh, whenever you put, uh, try to hit a particular URL it will respond back to you a certain kind of things for example let me give you a simple example that uh, right now we I have an API uh, this with this link so whenever I try to hit this API it will give me some random random joke of check knowledge so what we are doing is that we'll be making a simple class application and deploying it to a Heroku so that everyone uh, everyone can see it and what we and what that application will do is that every time the user refresh it or click refresh so he'll say he'll see a particular check nor is jock check nor is jock in that way in that so let's get started with it so first of all uh, you must have uh, yeah, I believe that you must have certain kind of uh, background of Python if you don't have you can just look around for the other tutorials as well as uh, I have a certain tutorials on Python uh, where I teach you how to install virtual environment as well as pip the package manager for the Python so what you can do is that uh, just move to your command line so I have a directory made with name is flask so as you can see I do ls and uh, nothing is there so what we will do is that we will create a virtual environment so to create a virtual environment we, we can just type virtual env and env so this is a name this is a name second one argument is the name of the argument so if you don't have any clue about what is the exactly the virtual environment let me share i will show you i will be sharing a link to you guys uh, where i talk about uh, how to install a virtual environment in your pc as well as your mac so what exactly is a virtual environment virtual environment is a type of a sandbox environment uh, where you install Python dependency and that will not get messed up with your uh, local dependent dependencies. So if you want to deploy a particular application to a uh, Python application to a server and you don't want this, uh, you don't want your local dependency to be available to that. So only the things required uh, shall be passed to that deployment server, right? So what we will do is that we will be installing our dependency in a sandbox environment and that environment is known as virtual environment okay so it's very easy to install if you have a pip installed in your mac as well as on your windows so you can just type sudo pip install virtual environment a sudo will not work in case of windows and if you don't know what exactly is the pip pip, pip is a uh, basically a python packet manager it's a uh, it has all kind of modules it has it's a basically a repository of repository where all the python module resides and if you don't know how to install it you can just google it around or follow up my tutorials where i have uh, given instruction how you can install the pip so after installing the virtual environment what you can do is that you have to create a virtual environment so you can type this command and hit enter so what exactly it will do it, it will do is that it will create a new virtual environment for me and it will install a python in it which uh, generally with the version of 2.7.10 so right now you can see ls that it's installed so what we can do is that we'll st start the virtual environment by typing vnv bin and calling the activate function so when whenever it got started so you can see your name uh, name of your virtual environment here so right now i am the virtual environment and virtual environment is started so what we can do is that now uh, we can start our create start creating our fast flask application and we can install the python dependent dependency the first dependency that we want is to install is flask so what we can do is that we can just use pip install flask so what it will do is that it will install all the dependencies that flask have and it will download the dependency from the packet manager using pip and it's already installed right now and it's installed the jinja as you can see here that it will it has installed flask Jinja, some markup safe as well as with, and some click and it's dangerous a certain kind of modules so it's okay so what we can do is that we will create it out and we use the ls that okay our virtual environment is there so now what you need is that you need a basic file to run so what we will do is that we'll create this as a flask 
application so flask will have a certain kind of directories already so what you can do is that you can create a template directories uh, template directory is a uh, directory where all the stm uh, all the templates will reside for example you have index index.html you have a different about.html contact.html the those will reside in the template directory by default flask will look for these files in the template directory and you can have also static directories static directories are basically the static files for example you have a certain kind of javascript certain kinds of css files you can just put there and flask will automatically will able to find those files in this static and you can just use use them in your project so right now if you look at it uh, we have this structure of our uh, project so what we'll do is that we will create a create a file that is app.py so for before that i what i will do is that i will open up this whole project in a subline so i have configured this but you can just go open this using a subline so here so i'm in a subline right now and what we have to do is that i have to create a simple file and uh, i will save this file in the same directory and i'll name it at app.py so this is our uh, project file right now so what we'll do is that uh, we'll write a certain code in the flask and what we will do is that it will print a hello world so our first task is to have a hello world ready so what we'll do is that we'll just call from flask import flask flask okay so this is the autocorrect problem with me right now so what I have to do is that I don't have to hit enter after it it will automa automatically correct it okay so we have imported our flask and what we can do is that we will create an app object and we'll create app reference with the name of flask and we'll pass the flask as this uh, flask and the name so what we have to do is that we have to write some write a uh, route something so whenever uh, whenever our application is called and the uh, by default route is this right so what we'll do is that we'll call at the rate app dot route is a method available and here we'll pass this and so whenever whenever this is called what we what we'll do is that we'll call a function known as index and what will it do we are going to return hello world okay it's a very simple program and at the last what you have to do is that app dot run and you can pass debug is equal to 2 if for the debug mode okay so let's try to run it and see how it's work so here in the command line what you can do is that you, you can just go to you can just using using python app.py so let's hit enter and as you can see uh, it's automatically started a server and our file is and the file is available with the local host with a port number of 5000 so what you can do is that we'll just click this link and you can see hello world is there so this is the simplest hello world program and here you can see also that it's a, we have a get request for the for the for a particular path that is slash and this is the stp stpp 1.1 request with a 200 ok message this is the response that you get and as you can see that it's searching for favicon.ico but right now we don't have anything related to favicon.ico so we are getting 404 that icon so what we can do is that uh, let's create an index file uh, and save it in a directory of templates and we'll name it as index.html sorry okay and what we'll do is that we'll make this application look like this so since we are consuming a chaknolis api so i thought why not make a simple html page with related to this one so this is a simple, very simple page uh, we have a doc type and we are using a w3ss as a css main css and this is a basically card layout of the w3 css and this is the body html so what we'll do is that i have created this and i will be providing you this thing on uh, on my description so you can just look at look at it around so what you can do is that whenever search someone 
uh, comes to this one we are going to render this template so, before, so to render a template what you have to do is that you have to call render template function okay and here what you can do is that you can just render call the render template function and it will automatically search in the templates folder and you don't, you don't uh, automatically search for this index to in templates index to html and it will give you that link whenever we call this okay so you don't have to restart it because as you can see uh, detected the change in file so it will automatically restart the server uh, this is the best part about the flask and let's refresh it so as you can see we have a card and it looks like very big card right now but it's okay and we can live with it okay so our basic structure is ready right now but what we have to do just now is that we have to consume certain jocks from api and uh, we have to put it in our application uh, we have to pass this jocks to our index.html and render those jocks in our index.html right now as you can see right now here that chuck norris is always go to the foo.bar this is a static this is a static text available here right now and we, what we will do is that we will change it to whatever we got from the api server so to do it's very simple what you have to do is that uh, you have to install a, another module so you can just go to your uh, and watch your environment and you can just control control c to cancel it okay as you can see here they have mentioned control c to quit and you can just pip install request you can install the request so right now i will installing the pip install request so request is basically on a python module uh, where we, you can what you can do is that you can get uh, you can use the certain HTTP methods like get, post, port, delete and all the CRUD operation that you can do using this request module and it's very simple to use and so and what we'll be doing is that by uh, we'll be installing it so we have already installed it sorry and we'll be importing it here and by default as we know that JSON is already over here so we'll be using the JSON also so what we have to do is that we'll create temporary variable R and we will call the requests dot get method to our api so which api we are using we are using this api so i will just pass this to this one and what let's do a temporary variable known as data and you uh, you'll get this joke and as a r dot text r dot text will print everything related to this for example r dot text will give you all this thing so this is a json file so what you can do is that there's a key and there's a value there's a key there's a value so what we have to do is that we have to give get value dot joke right as you can see type and value so we have to get value dot joke or joke so what you have to do is that this is a text file it will return a text request so you can just go to json call a method of json dot loads and now json dot loads what exactly it will do is that uh, whatever the text we get from r dot text it will convert into a json file and right now the data is json so let's do one thing we'll just print it out data dot value dot joke okay and let's see so as you already know we have to start the server again because we have uh, or we have already closed it and so it's already started so just go to the url and it will render something okay so we have error error okay so he's saying that well is not defined okay so i made a mistake baby okay value okay so i i forgot the spelling of value wow okay let's cheat okay let's do the same and again what we'll do is that we'll just refresh it and it's saying that value is not found it's okay but so we'll just see uh, what exactly we get by getting the error so as you can see that uh, here also they have mentioned okay that this is the error that you guys are getting let me make it this one 
that it's saying that okay data dot value dot job so dictionary attribute has no attribute value okay so let's see what are the things we have in the data okay let's, so okay so this is the same thing and only the okay so this is the dictionary that we have to we they had given to us okay so what we can do is that we'll cheat it out again now we'll use this thing okay it's jokes or joke joke okay and uh, detected the change refreshing it cool so again the joke is not defined it's saying okay single quotes again we are making a mistake okay it worked means our joke is there okay cool so joke is there so what we have to do is that we have to pass this to this or so let's do one thing let's make it to a variable and let's pass to this as a data joke equal joke okay so what now what we will use a let's remove this one also so we'll use a jinja template help so jinja template what exactly you can do is that you can just get all the so as you can see in the app.py we have passed the joke variable so joke variable will be available to this index html and we can get those using jinja jinja to template jinja to is a basically kind of a templating engine where you can just pass whatever the passing variables list dictionary extra that you have passed it will be available to your html page and you can just use or uh, present it with your dynamic id the dynamic contain okay so right now joke is available so let's do joke and just refresh the page and whoa it changes uh, to the ui so that's all from my side and uh, in the next tutorial what we are going to do is we will just uh, push this uh, to a deploy to a heroku so stay tuned and please like share and comment comment down below and uh, in the in the next video we will we'll be deploying it to a heroku so stay tuned